Okay, we have uh, 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 Matt over here. He's going to talk about Mist Go. All right, if anyone can hear me, I'll turn on the uh, microphone and I'll speak to you there in case I'm not talking to you. Um, is, uh, does everybody know what the Mist Board is? It's, uh, no, some okay, people start, do, some don't. I'll start there. Uh, the Mist Board is a FPGA uh, board made by a gentleman in Poland. I can't remember his name because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, they have a bunch of cores that they made available for it. Um, so on an FPGA, when you flash the the chip, it becomes that machine. If you're so uh, different cores are uh, that'll, that'll flash in the system. It's like the 2600 uh, Amstrad. Uh, they have the Apple II, the Arduino, the Atari 5200, the Atari 800. ColecoVision, and then this is the Atari ST. Um, this is the Commodore 64. Uh, this is the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, this is an arcade for uh, Galaxian. And another arcade for uh, Invaders, Space Invaders. And then these are uh, the Minimid cores. Uh, this is the OCS, one of the OCS cores. And then these are the two uh, MIST cores that just came out like the AGA. Um, he's got two revisions of it that he released at the same time. Um, I think um, one of them is because the, uh, it, go, it goes at like a faster speed, but I think it breaks some things, so I think he has two. Because one of them is just a little bit slower. Yeah, it's kind of unstable on the faster mode, so I haven't pushed it with the software to see uh, where the issues are. Um, there's another arcade core, Move Control, uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, I forgot which one that is. <laughs> I'll do that on the next one. Yeah, the Pac Man, Kendo, uh, Sega Master System, uh, the ZX Spectrum, something uh, called the Super Chip, which is a uh, high space, but much older system. Uh, 20, something called the Video Pack, and uh, another, I think another ZX Spectrum for it. Oh, uh, Matt, which one is the newest VIC 20 core? Uh, should be this one. Okay. Do you want to see it real quick? Sure. All right, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not as familiar with the Big 20. I started out with the Commodore 64, so. <laughs> I think that's the, the prompt. I'm not sure. Because all the PRG or CRT is supported. Uh, in this course, you know, there's also some things to add some memory to that. Like I said, I'm not familiar with, uh, with the big There's also another, other cores. Uh, they try to, most of the cores have a standard menu, but a few of them, the menu is slightly different because each core has to have its own, uh, has its own implementation of the menu. So uh, most of it, it they keep it, uh, like the mini MIG menu, but they're like the um, uh, TurboGrafx 16 has a completely different <coughs> menu system. So I'll go back. I'll go back to the Amiga core real quick. So I'll wait for the projector. <laughs> this one has a boot screen. If you put some files on there, it give you that fancy boot screen with the logo, but you don't have to have that. You can have it just boot directly to the core and not have to wait for it. So I'll go ahead and I'll go into sysinfo and do a speed check. We'll benchmark it real quick. <laughs> but your benchmark's pretty good. It thinks it's a, well it's an O20 core, but it thinks it's running at 113 megahertz. <laughs> so. We're up here past the 3,000, but not quite quite as quick as uh, 4,040. But it's pretty speedy. Um, I also noticed that it also performs much better in the 256 color modes. So we up to 256. Because before these, like on a standard 1200, in 256 mode, this really uh, lagged. 
Uh -huh. You really uh -huh. can see the draw. You can still see it a little bit here, but it's actually... Look how fast it moves. It's pretty... It's, mu it's much snappier than it, I remember it. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, I can also... Uh, let me benchmark the speed of the drives. It, I'm not sure if this has really changed that much. This is pretty... Uh, pretty standard. Yeah, not 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 too quick, but but it works. <laughs> so uh, this core, uh, as you know, the um, the mist board only has an 18-bit decoder, so it has to do some sort of translation from 24-bit to 18 to support the AGA. Um, so far, I've noticed it looks pretty good with all the games and stuff. I haven't noticed any any weirdnesses where there isn't uh, color representation. Um, I'm going to load up uh, a game real quick that's AGA. Uh, I guess I'll load Deluxe Pac-Man. So I kind of like this game. This game's kind of addictive. Take a second to move. Yeah. It's in PAL, so it's switching. So. so I don't know if anyone's played this game. This game's actually pretty good. Uh. So this is a game that requires the uh, AGA chipset. So. Does your little uh, machine put out volume there? Uh, it does, but I don't have any speakers plugged in. Oh, there is sound. Oh, you should have told me to. Uh, I could have moved some speakers yeah. over to you. I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Most of it's a visual presentation, oh, okay. so you're okay. Go ahead and exit out. Ask any questions about the new, the new cores? Any questions that I can move on to the next, is or if you want to see the other cores? Are, are all of the cores uh, running really well on the machine? Uh, some of the cores are more developed than others, uh, like the C64 core. Okay, can you show us that one? Yeah, that would be the next one. I'll show. I'll wait for it to see. Um, at the moment, it only loads uh, PRGs. Doesn't oh, okay. have any disk emulation yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but for now, it just loads PRGs. Okay. It supports the NTSC and PAL, so we can switch. We can switch modes if we need to. There's PAL, which will make the projector resync. So it supports both. I'll load a PRG real quick. It loads pretty quick because yeah, it's a PRG. Sing, sing the commando song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is coming out of the machine, but I don't have speakers hooked up. Stop, stop. Um, the MIST board does have uh, the standard DB9 ports on it that support the regular, uh, you know, Sega Genesis, Amiga, Atari 2600 joysticks. Um, there's also support for USB controllers. So if you have a USB controller, it'll route to that on most of the cores. Not not everything supports it yet, because um, it's every core has to support it. So it's not something that's low level in the machine or anything. So each core has to be uh, support that feature for it to work right. And uh, the MIST box or the MIST board is an open platform. Yes, any uh, yeah you can anybody can develop for it. There's. Uh, He's got a, a, a website set up where you can go in and get the entire development kit that he uses. Mm. All the software he uses to compile the cores and 
Um, he tries to make it as free as possible because some of it I think is proprietary from the company that makes the FPGA. Hmm. So you have to download their some of their software to get some of it to work because it's proprietary. Uh, uh, a lot of FPGAs, they try to keep people um, out on part of it. Do you know what kind of FPGA it is? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'll have to look that up. Okay. I'll give you the exact model, but I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. <laughs> I can easily make a mistake because I've also got the MCC 216 and, oh, yeah. MCC and the Chameleon and, uh, yeah, and the original Mini Mig. Right, so I mean, I, I, it gets kind of confusing. Like, is it the Spartan or I the never Altera? Brought the MCC 216. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I brought mine. Okay. <laughs> so I can demonstrate that. I got that in the back. Um, <coughs> Oh, the between, between the Mist and the MCC 216 and some of the other ones? Um, I think the, uh, the Mist and the MCC 216 have this, I, they might be the same chipper from the same line. I know they have, uh, they're both 18 bit decoders on both of them, so the MCC 216 should be capable of running the AGA core. But the development seems to be a little slower right now on the MCC 216 for yeah, some reason. Yeah, but isn't the MCC 216 closed to a more closed platform? Yeah, they, they develop the cores and port them as opposed to the MCC 216 where it's open to anybody to port a as core to, to the it. Mist. Yeah, oh yeah, the mist, the mist is open and the MCC 216 is more closed. So the... Um, Any other questions? Anybody want to see any other is that arcade demos? Any other, or uh, any other things you want to see on the, uh, the mist board? I can you show guys? you Pac Man. I, can <laughs> yeah. I got the arcade core, that's kind of cool. Though. The arcade core? Yeah. What uh, is that? What's an arcade core? Yeah, some of the some arcade cores have been ported. Uh, here's a few of them. I put them in capital before we can see. Uh, everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows oh, Pac-Man. Okay. I'll just pull that up. And if I had the sound hooked up, you would hear the... It was in the sound effects. So, so this is the actual arcade core with the actual hardware flashed into it. Um, you got to use the buttons on the front to insert corners. And you press start. And then uh, this I got it plugged into. This is okay, you do that out of the... It's on the other port. We're putting in our own music. Or sound effects. Yeah. So it's the actual it's the actual game. So the strategies that worked oh, in the arcade work on here. <laughs> the same one. Um, I know uh, Jim Drew is distributing. I think the uh, FPGA arcade. FPGA arcade. Which I think some of the work that they've been doing. There's a story behind that. Yeah, some of the work that they've been doing on some of the cores kind of leaked over. To the mist board. Oh, okay. I think the Vic 20 is one of them, and I oh. think some of the arcade cores are using it's the same one. Because uh, I'm trying to remember who else has a Vic 20 core. Does the Turbo Chameleon have the Vic 20 core? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I have to remember. I have, uh, I need to update mine. Mm. It's hard to update all these. Uh. So you end up with so many of these things, trying to hook it up all at the same time and keep them all updated it can be challenging. Any, oh, and, and the mist. The Mist board is how much for the Mist board again? I think it's uh, about two ninety nine. Two ninety nine, but if I remember correctly, but there's an exchange rate. Oh, okay, and there's a bot. He's from Poland, so and uh -huh. he's so it's two ninety nine US or two ninety nine. Two ninety nine US. Oh, okay, and yeah, is it just a board or does it come in that box? It comes in this he, 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 complete system with the case. Oh, it comes in uh, that box. No keyboard and mouse, of course, but the, you don't have to install anything. It comes in this. Lift it up. So it comes in this metal case, which is pretty sturdy, with four screws on the side. So it's about as high as I can hold it. It's kind of tangled. <laughs> you only go so far as the power cord. Um, it's got the two DB9s on the side. Uh, three buttons that are programmable by each core can have its own setting for that. So one of, sometimes in some of the cores, like this one, that'll bring up the menu. Um, other ones, oh, I hit the reset, sorry. <laughs> One of them's the reset. <laughs> Remember what your order is. So I'll have to boot up again. 
Um, here's the back of it. Okay. It takes uh, VGA, and of course, it's uh, scandal. Everything's scandable. Oh, so. scandable. So all the Amiga stuff. So this is not. This is the 31 kilohertz. Because uh, it has a. Uh, uh, they implemented Amber chip. That's the same one that's in the A3000 and uh -huh. emulated uh, in the uh, FPGA. Nice. So. But you, you just need to find a monitor that does do the 60 and 50 hertz, because a lot of the games are in 50 hertz. So, yeah. Yeah, Robert has his monitor here. It should work on there. We haven't plugged it in yet, but I'm sure it works just fine, fine on his monitor. Any other questions for Matt? Because Matt has part two of a presentation. Uh, yeah, I have he more. Has set up a, yes, <laughs> he has more. I have more stuff to show. The Raspberry Pi presentation with what? The C64 core or more? Uh, it has more cores, but I'll just show the, for now, I'll just show the C64. Oh, just the C64. Yeah, but I can show you so the system and how many that's set up. Because um, I use the uh, RetroPie distribution, which I'll go into that when I plug it in, and I'll show you all the emulators that it, that works on there. Yeah, yeah, in fact, this is, uh, I did bring the Raspberry Pi 2. So, with the four cores, it, it does perform a lot better. So, yeah, it's the retro privacy distance. Okay, any I'll go other questions on the mist before we have a short pause while he resets the equipment? Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Yes. <laughs>